Night Show number 154, also August 24th, 1998. It's like the worst show I've ever seen that was better than another show. <laughs> Hollywood Hogan and his crew arrive. Well, first off, we got to talk about Tony, who said, we're often literally rolling. Right. So I imagine he was just rolling down the ramp as he was doing the opening. He may be like mankind, surfing down there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> literally. So, so, I gotta get to the booth. Bischoff starts talking. He says, I am the one who ran Vader and Johnny B. Bad out of WCW. Now, there's a cool story, bro. That is, <laughs> who that is true. Who in the fuck at 1998 <laughs> could possibly care about this boast? He says that he's in charge and he'll decide who stays or who goes. Eddie, as in Eddie Guerrero, who then was not on the show. At all. Hogan runs down a DDP. Runs down the ultimate warrior, as he called him. Oops. He runs down Kevin Nash. He runs down Goldberg, and that's it. Mike Enos versus Wrath. Things are going fine for a while, and they just turned south and never recovered. Wrath took two of the worst turnbuckle bumps you'll ever see. He tried a flying shoulder tackle or something, but like in midair, both guys forgot what to do. So they just kind of crashed under the earth and looked at each other. Yep. And then Wrath won with a pump handle power slam. That's a good move. Somebody should steal that. I loved when he went for the pump handle slam and Mike different. Enos totally didn't give a shit and just gave him his arm in the most telegraphed manner possible. <laughs> should mention, by the way, as we'll see later, they're creating a new Goldberg-style guy. Sure. sure. And you'll see why. Then we had... Ten minutes of nothing happening. <laughs> exactly. There was a recap of Nitro last week. Dancing Nitro Girls, Nitro Party Clips, all sorts of bullshit that is not wrestling. Kaz Hayashi versus Dean Malenko. Highlight of this was actually Larry. Says, you know, my uncle's name was Kaz. That's right. But he wasn't Japanese. Hmm. And he starts mumbling and bumbling around trying to explain himself, and the announcers calmly said, we understand, Larry. <laughs> he, he wasn't Japanese. Right. Your uncle. Dean was in total machine mode. Yep. There's a spot where he gets sent outside. Kasuyashi does this huge, like, flying aerial dive, like a car wheel over the top. Yeah. Throws the guy back in the ring, and then Dean kicks him and starts doing moves. That happened. Yeah. There was no transition. No. There was no life to this match at all. It was just a series of moves properly executed before the finish. There was a great delayed German suplex, and Kaz was the one giving it. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was Kaz awesome. Hayashi was awesome. So he missed a leg lariat, this Mr. Hayashi did, and then Dean hit a leg lariat of his own, and then the double underhook powerbomb, and the cloverleaf for the win, and he was just as emotional about it as I was. <laughs> Wolfpack hype video, and they all came out for a promo. Nash runs down Hogan, runs down Bischoff, says, one day I will be running this company. He says, I will run this company even if I have to be world champion to do it. Right. Wow. It's like, fuck. I didn't even think about that, but you were exactly right. That's exactly what he said. It is. What do you mean? A promoter putting himself on, in, well, not that, on, but on the belt? What? Not just that, but the whole concept of... Like, I don't want to be the champ. I'd rather but not like, be... If the, I have to be to the, run this company, I, I guess champion I will of the world. Be. I guess I'll just go get it. What a chore. <laughs> but since it's a means to my end, or an end to my means, whatever, I'll go do it. Talks about getting speared by Goldberg. Says if Goldberg wants to make things right, then he will team with me against Hogan and Giant tonight. Goldberg does his whole entrance. Now, he's a little faster than usual, but it's the whole march through the back, company by security, walk through the pyro and all that. He walks out, he pokes a finger in Nash's chest, he barks, and he leaves. And the crowd boos because they didn't hear him. And then Nash translates and he says, he said you got it. <laughs> oh, what a mess. That was that. Conan versus Jim Neidhart. Who oh. who puts matches like this together? The devil. And I will say, <laughs> it was bad. It was not horrible. I what? gave this match... Sometimes funny things like this happen. <laughs> okay. Like you expect it to be so unearthly terrible. That's yes. the way I saw and it. And then it's like, okay. No, you're it, wrong. It exceeded my low expectations, which were a 0% chance of being any good whatsoever. Thank you, Vinny. You understand what I'm saying. I do. I expected much worse than what we got here. Anvil missed a splash. Conan won with the next factor in the team. I mean, Anvil's sunrise. terrible. There's no two ways about it. He's been in this business forever. The thing you got to remember, Craig, is later Stevie, or not Stevie, I'm sorry, uh, Mongo. That's true. Is going to wrestle. Mm -hmm. He was much well, worse than try. either of these men. 
Tony Schiavone brings out Stevie Ray for a promo. He promises to get his title back from Chris Jericho when Booker T interrupted. Making his big return, he says, look, I had a grueling single schedule. I was beat up. I need to take some time off to heal up. He left the country, he said. He left the country. He didn't say which country he went to. No, he could have went anywhere. He could have went to Antarctica. That I would have at least been a good story. I don't I think would, he went to Antarctica. I want to see those skits. Spit, It'd be better than most of this show. Spinner Rooney's on the ice. <laughs> Can you imagine how many times you could go around? <laughs> so... He says, meanwhile, while I was gone healing, you took my TV title, you pretended to be TV champion, and then you lost the belt. Stevie blames all of this on J.J. Dillon. He says he's trying to drive a wedge between us. So basically, to cut to the chase, Stevie is all about the tag titles. The Booker wants a singles career. They're not getting along. Well, more to a point, Stevie is all about titles for himself. Well, yeah. So he took the TV title he wanted it for himself. Now that he's lost it, he wants the tag title, so he'll have one. He's appalled that Booker T would be so selfish as a challenge for the U.S. Do you realize, by the way, that it was it was the TV title in the best of seven, right? Uh, the best of seven was for a title shot. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so they did that whole rigmarole. And this is what happened with the TV title in the end. Yep. Booker T left the country, and Stevie <laughs> took his belt. Yes, the, the non-champion lost it to yeah. the Chris Jericho, yeah. Dude. If so, I ever expand Death of WCW again, <laughs> I mean... The untold... I won't, I won't be able to do a print edition. Untold tales of the Death of WCW. It's going to be like in three parts. Oh, Christ. Uh, Booker runs down Bret Hart because he has a U.S. title match tonight, and he wants Stevie to watch his back, but Stevie's pissed. Shivani brings out Dallas Page for a promo. Dallas is looking for members of Team WCW. Yeah, there's there's war games coming up, mm-hmm. and this guy's, I guess, volunteered. He's begging for anyone to He's come volunteer no to fight on behalf of World what? Championship Wrestling. That's the story. That's the story. And it turns out, by the way, there is no one on the roster worthwhile because two retired guys have to come out and help That's him. Right. That's right. There's no Goldberg. Uh, Goldberg wasn't interested. He's WCW, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 just, I mean, you could, the, you the winner gets a title do. shot, so you could argue Goldberg can't be in it. But Dude, the IWGP champion's in the G1, so anything could fucking happen. <laughs> well, Nitro is not the G1. Yeah, before you take a match, you might want to make sure that you have the proper <laughs> opponents. <laughs> Kinda. And not only opponents, oh, opponents but partners, you need partners, partners as well. Yes. Uh, you don't just go willy-nilly sign yourself up for a match. And My favorite part is that DDP is begging for partners, and Roddy Piper's music is queued up and ready to go. That's right. Sure. We haven't seen this goddamn guy in how long? When was the last time we saw Thank him? Thank you for bringing that up. Where has he been? Oh, that reminds me, by the way. That reminds me. Let me go back a little ways. At the beginning of the show, they had that stupid promo with Eric Bischoff, and he had a pen. That's right. Because the old school name for a booker was the pencil, and he's describing how he can use his pen to keep anyone or anyone he can keep anyone in or out of the business right wasn't the storyline that he had no power yep was that not the storyline that he had no power to hire or fire anyone that's yeah. why Roddy Piper was there now apparently Bischoff has power and then they bring out Roddy Piper and Roddy Piper does his usual bullshit promo. I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. He's talking about Sammy Sosa, Bill and Hillary Clinton, Mm -hmm. the dress. And then he says, I'm the only guy that you can't fire, Eric. What? I don't know. Now, here's here's the thing. I don't know. He's the commissioner. He's the commissioner, and he shows up once every two months. Yeah, because this show sucks. When all was said and done, the upshot was Piper was going to be one of Paige's partners in war games. He thought Warrior should be the other guy. They would find out before the show was over, he said. Steve Mongo McMichael versus Scotty Riggs. Scotty Riggs looking more and more like Saturn in the physique department. I will say one thing positive. Steve McMichael's selling was the funniest thing in the night. <laughs> it was <Yeah>. not. <laughs> like, there is no NWO skit There is no DX skit. There is no rock promo. There is nothing in the whole 90s that was funnier than Steve McMichael selling. I've never never seen anyone regress as (laughs) as badly and dramatically as Steve McMichael here. Watching it here and thinking of how funny it was, 
made me think it has to be intentional. No. He is trying to be a no. comedy wrestler now. He's trying to be a good wrestler, which makes it funnier. Do you did you guys ever have when you were a kid the inflatable punching bags? That's funny because I was gonna bring up weebles. Close to the same thing. Yeah. But you would, you know, you blow up the balloon and it's got some weight at the bottom. You're a kid and you punch it back, back and forth and you get a little bigger. You're tired of punching. You start throwing it around. But, you know, it, it, it it's a balloon. It doesn't have any arms or legs. It just flies through the air. That's how Steve Mongo McMichael takes bumps. I think a better analogy would be, for example, a whale breaching. If you've ever seen that. Yes. Yep. Or imagine you and your buddies are playing by the pool and you're going to fake punch your buddy, and he's going to leap and fall into the pool. No, yes. no uh, that wasn't work, because I guarantee you kids would show more uh, motion. Well, they would, but my point is, like, he gets hit, and he leaps high into the air mm -hmm. and falls flat on his back. He, he jumps straight up in the air. Yeah. He flies backwards, flat on his back. But the key is, if you just took a picture of him and ignore the fact he's in midair, it looks like he's standing still. <laughs> yes, his, his body arms, is straight up and down. His, sides, his yeah. arms are down by his sides. He just launches forward. He looks like one of those performing dolphins at SeaWorld. It is a breaching whale. I think that's the best one. If you... If I if, do say so myself. If anyone out there can get a video of Steve uh, Steve and Michael taking a bump in this match and put in, like, dolphin squeaks with it, sound effects, <laughs> or a whale song, please do. I left my ass off at this match. Steve, Mongo, Steve McMichael is terrible. It was so fucking funny. He's so bad. Uh-huh. He's and Riggs was trying so hard to just do the most easy, idiot-proof match, and it was impossible. Riggs is a great wrestler, and he could not no, do anything. You cannot Mongo-proof Mongo. a match. It looked like Mongo had never run the ropes before. His Even his football tackles were terrible, and he was a great football player. Because <laughs> he was the, blown up. This went way too long. Mongo won with the tombstone. By the way, this isn't even about them, but it's on commentary. Riggs is in The Flock, along with guys like Horace and Sick Boy, as we right. shall discuss here. Shivani is talking about The Flock, and he's trying to describe them. <laughs> and they're all followers of Raven, and they're all outcasts, whatever he's using. Then he's, he's talking about the trademarks, and he just says, one of, the, one of those is the way they don't bathe. <laughs> well, wow. You know, is he wrong? Well, Kidman's always scratching himself. Raven says, if you're going to follow me, the first thing you must do is hand over your soap. So, Mongo wins. Horace hits him with these stop signs. We can get concussions on this show, too. He and Sick Boy are putting the boots to him when Malenko makes the save. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, we're teasing a horseman reunion or a new version because Malenko's in there now. So, there's two guys from the flock and two potential horsemen. So, you think, okay, the horsemen clear the ring and we'll do whatever. Why was Saturn out there? Who cares? Saturn runs out. I've hit my wall. He pushes Malenko. He tries a tope on a horse. Rather than catch him. On a him, horse? It would have been better on a horse. It would have been. He would have caught him. Horace, rather than catch him, throws a stop sign at him in midair, and then everyone just falls down. And the stop sign did not make contact? I don't know. The only thing that made contact oh was Saturn God, who and gives the floor. A shit? Scott Norton and Rick Fuller. <laughs> he, is not, three he is not a now. horseman yet. Scott Norton and Rick Fuller had a match that could have been awesome. It went one minute, and Norton won with a bad power bump. Okay, so I'll just give it away. They're building up a bunch of Goldbergs, so Nash can beat all of them ah, before I he see. gets to Goldberg. Yes. It's funny because it makes sense. It's so fucking stupid. It is. Yeah. Oh, my God. We'll get to it, but it's very stupid. You know, I always watch Nitro first, and when I watched this Scott Steiner segment with his burnout doctor, I was like... <laughs> This is, show is just like, it's so terrible. I don't know why I watch it. It's like the worst show I've ever seen. After watching Raw, I look back and it's like, dude, this was good. I described it as unwatchable. <laughs> Did you watch Raw or Nitro first? I watched Raw first. Really? Yeah. Fuck, after Raw, this was, this this I accepted after Raw. Well, you liked it. Why didn't you describe I it? I didn't like it. You I hated it the first time. <laughs> but after I watched Raw, I was like, I'll take this. Well, for, show me, Brian, what was positive about this. Well, nothing. I Beyond mean, that, it was not raw. Steiner came Name out. Name one good thing that happened here. I mean, just the irony that Steiner's character has got a gimmick doctor. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> the best part is Steiner, he goes, his doctor goes, you can't wrestle. Or Steiner goes, Doc, I can't wrestle tonight, can I? Why? 
I forget how he set it up, but the doctor doesn't know the answer. Because. And so Scott goes, it's because I'm hurt. And the doctor goes, all right. He's a burnout. Yeah. So Tony starts burying this doctor. As he should. Fucking Heenan. No, I'm sorry. It's the other way around. Heenan buries a doctor. Tony starts sticking up for the doctor. Tony Schiavone in the show. I'm pretty sure this was the show where like he was given no format. He didn't know what was going on. He was just trying to get through this fucking show. Scott calls out Rick. It's Bagwell. Tony Schiavone just says, we've been duped again. Yeah. They did this once before. Another horrible, terrible skit. I wrote here, how did people not turn to Raw? Now that I've watched Raw, I know the answer. They turned and turned back. Why did no one turn to baseball or football? Scott tells him to roll over and play dead, then pinned him. And I wrote, fuck this show. So I didn't like this segment, but it was still better than Raw. Oh, my God. And, Lex and, Luger. Oh, my God. I forgot how bad the show was. Lex Luger and Brian Adams. Some fuck this match. Who? Fuck this match. No, the bigger question. Who? That's something people don't understand, okay? First off, if you haven't read Death of WCW, it's available. Hardcover, softcover. Right. It's on Amazon.com. There's an audible, audible version where I read it to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll give you a little bit of spoilers here. They had like 300. I was almost going to exaggerate. I want to try and be honest here. They had like 380 people under contract. Some <laughs> fucking preposterous number of wrestlers under contract. Somebody took that goddamn list. And they were like, let's put Lex Luger and Brian Adams together in the ring. Let's give him 12 minutes. Ah! On a three-hour show, we got time to kill. And the funny thing about this match, they stalled forever. Yep. They I was so fucking angry at all of this stalling. <laughs> but then they started wrestling. And I was so fucking appalled that they were wrestling. Go back to they couldn't win for losing here. The Brian Adams from Canada that plays guitar would have been a better opponent. <laughs> Positive. Adams did the longest head scissors I've ever seen dude. on the mat. Th followed dude, by dude. the longest nerve hold. Dude. All of this, this match for 10 minutes, it was four minutes of stalling and then laying around on the mat. I promise you, I burned more calories typing a description of this match than Brian Adams did wrestling it. This was this was the Lex Luger that two weeks ago won the title from Bret Hart absolutely. in like a great Nitro moment, the yep. best moment since Goldberg won the title. Now he's facing Brian Adams in the worst ten minute match I've ever seen. This was like, this was as long and draining and boring in ten minutes as all six hours of Slam and Slam at the pre-show was. Just a, a, a marathon to get through, just a death march. This match cut like a knife. Thank you, Craig. <laughs> so finally, Lex makes his comeback. And it's amazing. It is amazing. No matter how many times they kill Lex off, no matter how many times they drop the ball with him, at least he can get the people in behind him just by calling for that damn rack. Lex really was astounding in that way. Eventually, he fought off interference from Vincent. He hit the torture rack. He won. And as terrible as this match was, as soul draining as it was, the people were happy they got to see Lex Luger rack somebody. Had a Warrior hype video, and then Warrior came out for a promo. Oh my god. Listen, I, I hesitate to say this because he actually did pass away. The fact that he lived 19 years after this promo, all he did was come to the ring. He was gasping for air. He was gasping for air cutting a promo and then later in the show he actually did a couple of moves and i thought he was going to collapse i could not believe how unhealthy this guy looked in 1998 fans are already turning on him some of you don't remember this but like in the late 90s early 2000s warrior had a website do you remember some of the things that he used to post on yes. his website yeah it was like he took the thesaurus mm -hmm. and just found the most preposterous... He, he wrote something yeah. and then spent hours going through and finding the most preposterous word to replace everything that he wrote. Mm -hmm. it, was it was indecipherable. It was like, because he was a smart person, but he always played just a lunatic on uh, WWF television. He wanted to 
overcompensate. Oh, did he ever? So he is out here rambling on about how he wants to start a revolution based on magnificence, not malfeasance. As we said, there's other alliteration in there. Fans are booing. Oh, he's just going on and on. And he, the ultimate warrior told the fans to have some patience. He loses his train of thought. He just stops talking for a while. The yes. ultimate warrior told fans to have some patience. The guy that sprinted to the ring. <laughs> what? He just goes on and on. It's so bad. And finally, there is smoke, and he vanishes. This did not make me want to see Hogan Warrior 2, and it sure as hell did not make me want to watch Warrior cut more promos over the coming weeks. White noise in his entrance damn near put me to sleep, but unfortunately <laughs> I stayed awake. The only good thing on either show yes. was Chris Jericho and Kurt Hennig. This was great. It was awesome. It was great, but I got to say one thing about it. Back in the day when you had studio shows and they were like an hour long, mm -hmm. I understand having a 10-minute time limit. Sure. But they got a 10-minute time limit for the TV title in an hour-long show. Three-hour show. A three-hour yeah. show. Yeah. Hey, I don't care. I got to watch something fun with talented performers. Yeah. That is true. So the story here is they are both heels, but Hennig is a, basically, a, uh, he's a jock, and Chris Jericho is a dork. He's a little twerp out there. So Hennig is kind of, he's kind of amused by Jericho's wackiness, but he's also insulted that this silly little, little man with a wacky haircut calls himself a champion. Jericho is insulted by Hennig's lack of respect that he is the television champion of the world, and he won't uh, take Jericho seriously. So it starts off kind of life heart lighthearted, <laughs> but then Hennig slaps him. Jericho slaps him back, and suddenly they just start beating the piss out of each other. Yep. They're yanking each other around by the hair. It's a fight now. This is awesome. They tea or they counter each other's finishers for a bit. They're having a brawl. The bell randomly rings. It's a time limit draw. I'm sure it was not ten minutes. It was probably seven forty one. Felt like about three. Yeah. You know, they throw down the ref and keep fighting, and then it's back to bullshitville. So the giant is in the NWO Hollywood, as is Kurt Hennig. Chris Jericho is a free agent, although he's not a candidate, I guess, to fight on Team WCW. So Giant comes out, and Hennig is holding Jericho, inviting Giant to hit him, but Giant instead throws Hennig to the ground. Jericho leaves, and Giant and Hennig bicker at each other as they go to the back. What's going on? Dissension. Well, the way they described it was that Giant and Jericho have a connection that overrules Giant's relationship with the NWO. Why do they have a connection? I'm pretty sure they're both going to WWE, so they're buddies now. It's foreshadowing. Yeah. They are setting up their tag team championship run in like 2010. It's it's Jericho. I hadn't here. thought of that. Yep. Jericho here in Thank 98. You. Oh, I, I, I apologize to both you men. You're, you're, I did not give you enough credit for the long-term story planning of Jericho. This is awesome now. Yeah. This is the best segment. I told you. <laughs> so let me talk about this next segment very quickly. Brett's out for a promo. He calls out Booker T for a match. No Booker T. Cut backstage, Booker is laid out. Stevie then storms out demanding to know what happened. This is another example where the announcers, I don't think we're clued in to anything on this show. Because the very first thing Tony says is, did Stevie Ray lay out his own brother? Because I'm sure he assumed that's what happened. Yeah. But in fact, we don't know. We have no idea what happened. Stevie and Brett are arguing. The NWO comes out. Stevie joins the NWO. Did I miss anything? Nope. Thank you. So do I skip to the next segment then? or Unless you got more to say about this. No, that's what happened. It took, a, it took much longer to happen in real life than you summed up there. Did you catch when uh, when Stevie Ray was pondering whether to join the NWO and Brett said, come on, be a buddy. <laughs> Brett so does not care. No. Why would he? Shivani at this point notes you need a scorecard to keep track of what's going on on Nitro. That's not good. No. Did he add that's not good? No, I said that. Oh. It'd be nice if he would have. Hulk Hogan and Giant versus Kevin Nash and Goldberg. We had Nash and Giant going one-on-one -on -one for a while. Do you remember on that last show with the Raw show that we reviewed and I talked about that Hell in a Cell match and how I had no memory of it whatsoever? Mm -hmm. Hogan and Goldberg got in the ring together. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I have no memory of this whatsoever. Nope. So it probably sucks. And turns out I was right. This was the first time they were in the ring together since Goldberg beat Hogan. Yeah. 
They didn't do jack shit. Oh, I, I totally forgot about the finish here until right now. Uh, Goldberg was rendered inept in this match. He didn't have any of his fire. He looked like just a guy in with these other just a guys. So they're doing this match. And Disciple cuts Goldberg off of the belt shot from the floor. I'm thinking, okay, he's a sneaky heel. Maybe the ref didn't see it. Then Kurt Hennig and the Disciple are attacking Kevin Nash in the floor. Who's belt, by the way? I guess Goldberg's. Yeah. <laughs> Should somebody hold on to that damn thing? Apparently not. Not who can withstand the power of the Disciple. So <laughs> they're attacking. <laughs> that was way funnier than it should have been. I think I've just lost it. <laughs> so Hennig and the Disciple are attacking Nash on the floor. And I'm thinking, okay, that's two guys not in the match attacking a legal participant, but maybe it's because he's on the floor, so the ref is not going to call for the DQ. Then they hit the ring. There's yeah. four NWO guys now fighting Nash and Goldberg. Did you watch the referee during this? No. May I just get to the finish before I'm you sorry, say I, I, I apologize. Go ahead. It won't take me long. There's this huge brawl. Luger runs out. Conan runs out. In the melee, which included some guys just turning and stepping out of the ring just because, Goldberg spears Hennig, Goldberg jack jackhammers Hennig, Goldberg pins Hennig, and the ref counts three. Yeah, that happened. What the fucking fuck? <laughs> because his show sucks. No. no he pinned the, a guy who wasn't hey, in the match. Yeah. Apologize for interrupting. You're, the floor is No, the, the referee, while all this was going on, it was like a guy that knew he should be doing something, but he had to follow the script. He looked bewildered. There was there was garbage hitting the ring because the fans knew it was complete BS. And this ref just had to stand there and look like a moron because he didn't he didn't disqualify anybody. No. And then he countered a hit on a guy who was not in the match. <laughs> That's the best part. <laughs> the guy was in the match. He got pinned. And. A no DQ match where you can pin anyone. And to name what an was, angle. Why didn't pin a fan then? <laughs> he may well have. His fan's got an NWO shirt. Should have pinned that damn ref. And Tanae was forced to say one fifty eight for Goldberg. Yeah. Really? Yeah. This counts. Yeah. Dude, wait till Sid starts losing and it counts as a win. <laughs> this is the least of our worries. <laughs> so this time Nash accidentally hits Goldberg. And Goldberg brawls a giant. Giant knocks him out of the ring. Warrior Page and Piper run down. This was, <laughs> honest to God, the last 30 seconds of this show were good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they, no. Right. Okay, first off, I got to see DDP running. Sure. Followed by Warrior running. <laughs> yes. Followed by DDP, or I'm sorry, Piper. Roddy Piper running. Combined days, 206. They all made it to the ring. Yeah. Okay. Warrior starts running wild on guys. Piper starts running wild on guys. The fans absolutely lost their shit. And I was like, you know what? Hey, if it works, it works. Now, I realize I could say that about Raw, but I don't want to give him any credit. But <laughs> this worked, so I'm going to give him credit. I just thought it was funny that these three men stood tall in the ring, and they weren't even involved in the main event. No. And now we're setting up war games, baby. The so worst war games ever. Show ends with Team Old, Paige, Piper, and uh, Warrior. They have cleared the ring. Goldberg and Nash are bickering on the floor, and the show goes off the air. Now... I will say one thing I'm happy about it, that I watched this. There is a photo out there. It's easy to find if you want to, but it is Goldberg, Piper, Warrior, and uh, Paige just posing for a photo together backstage and all smiling. But it surfaced like years after WCW died. And I was just looking at this thing just saying, what? When the fuck did this happen? What? What, what is this quartet? When were they all in the same room together? I totally forgotten that they were in now fact you team know. WCW. So yes, it must it had to have been after this event. Listen, everybody. I hate to do this, but we're gonna watch war games. <laughs> we're gonna watch that war games match. By this I assume you were watching the nineteen eighty seven version again. <laughs> no. We must watch it. And then I think Vinny and I already did this, but we're gonna watch Hogan and Warrior again later. These matches must be watched, okay? It's ways down the road. I hate you right now. Fear not. You'll thank me after you see the log roll spot. No, I won't. All right, everybody. That's it. Thursday, we'll talk more about the convention. Because I know Ed's going to send some stuff, and Vinny and I will have plenty of time because we'll be chilling out at the beach together. What a time that's going to be, Vinny. Woo. 
I, I know you're excited. Yeah. Are you going to set up something like this on the beach, this lounge chair? Here? Oh, man, I already got You should see the upstairs. There's two beds up there. I've never been oh, there. Oh, whoa, whoa. What are we yeah. doing? What kind of show is this now? Well, we're not going to be in bed together. Oh, okay. Well, not yet. But you'll be on the bed with that thing right there. I'm not talking Craig. I'm what? talking the mic. This mic, not <laughs> this mic. I just got really uncomfortable about this whole beach oh, thing. Oh, get out of here, you idiot. Vinny, the last time we were at the beach, you and I sat in a car together in the dark in the parking lot for an hour. Do you guys we do have a really weird relationship when you think about <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, don't fucking say. Yeah. Anyway. It's just dawned on you. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> now. Yes, I don't, I don't have big on self-introspection. That's going to be fun, everybody, so look forward to that. And uh, that is it. Thank we'll talk God. to you again after a while. Good night. Bye.